send it back to our studio in Harlingen with Sydney Hernandez for today's headlines. Thanks, Nicole. Democrat Beto O'Rourke says he is ending his Democratic presidential campaign for the 2020 race. New information surrounding the migrant crisis along the southern border. Mexican officials are releasing a report claiming the number of migrants arriving at the U.S.-Mexico border has decreased by 56 percent. Mexico's foreign secretary attributes the National Guard's presence and their agreement with the United States to the reduction. The city of Mission is keeping Corporal Jose Luis Espericueta's memory alive, or as many called him, Speedy, on what would have been his 45th birthday. CBS 4's Sandra Garcia joins us live outside the Mission Police Department. The hearing for an injunction filed against Customs and Border Protection continue today, this time with key Border Patrol officials on the stand. CBS 4's Sandra Garcia joins us live outside of the Brownsville Federal Courthouse. Sandra. Tonight at 6, do you know what your child is doing on their phone? Stark County Special Crimes Unit says they are seeing an increase in kids sharing explicit photos of themselves. Our CBS 4 on the road crew is ready for some Friday night football. Chris and Nicole are live at Lions Stadium in La Feria. 313 pages of statements and interviews by McAllen police about the La Plaza Mall robbery that caused chaos among shoppers last Saturday. A bunch of people running, that's all I knew, and then I wanted to check it out. Coming out of Deutsch and Deutsch, apparently there was shooters in there with guns. The affidavit consists of the accounts of over 20 police officers and bringing more questions than answers. One officer says suspect George Rodriguez Mejia had a black gun. However, McAllen police said in a statement, quote, we have no use of firearms at this incident. And again, the gun that police allege does not exist is a reference on page 29 of the affidavit. Another officer says, quote, CSI took custody of the gun on the counter, which belonged to Mr. Rodriguez. Page 69 even says citizens heard six shots being fired. However, McAllen police assure CBS4 this was a non shooting event. Something else that's confusing about this media release is that McAllen police say seven men were arrested in connection with the robbery. However, in the affidavit, officers mention a woman named Maria Teresa Garza. It says she was detained at the Studio 6 motel across from the mall. However, her mugshot has never been found and she has never been mentioned to the media from police. The affidavit also reveals a possible getaway car. A maroon Oldsmobile silhouette van is mentioned multiple times in the report as being parked suspiciously in front of the food court entrance with only a driver inside matching the description of the other suspects. The van was towed from the parking lot and remains at the McAllen Police Department for further processing. Okay, yes. Um, any additional units can respond to that? Yeah, um, I think we have uh, Medic 2, Trunk, Trunk 1, and maybe Trunk 1. The call between fire departments moments before the death of an 11-year-old girl in Mission. In a CBS4 exclusive, the city of Palmview tells their side of the story after being accused of pushing off a 911 call. A CBS4 City Hernandez has the 911 calls that tell a different side to the story. She joins us live outside of the Palmview Fire Department with more. Nicole, these are the 911 records that are clearing up misconceptions about which department was supposed to respond to a house fire that claimed the life of an 11 year old in rural Mission. She had told me um, there's a fire in the house, you know, so I proceeded to tell her, you know, uh, Call 911, get out of the house and call 911. The family of Versady Hernandez, who died in a house fire last month, says that 911 call went to Palmview Fire, but they passed it off to another department. The city that should have responded to the, the call should have been Palmview. The city of Palmview did not receive an emergency call in regard to the fire, and we certainly did not pass the call. Eric Flores, attorney for the city of Palmview, says the only call Palmview Fire received regarding the fire was from the city of Alton asking for help. There was no delay on behalf of the city of Palmview's fire department. We did not receive an emergency call or a call for service. What we did receive was a mutual aid call 
from Alton Fire Department. CBS4 investigated Palm Beach's 911 records, which show three calls were made to Palm View Fire. None of them connected to the Alejandra Street Fire. We obtained an exclusive copy of the phone call from Alton Dispatch to Palm View Dispatch. There are really bad structure fires. Two structure fires. Off of La Homa. Hey, what the numbers do? Yes, ma'am. Um, this is out of the Dalton PD. Uh huh. Yes, ma'am. Um, my roof fire chief is asking for mutual aid from Palm View. Yeah, we already have uh, the tanker one going. Okay, is there any, any additional units you can send out there? CBS4 also obtained Alton's records, which confirm four 911 calls were made to them in connection to the deadly fire. We reached out to Alton Fire to confirm the mutual aid call. They referred us to the Hidalgo County Fire Marshal's office, who has not gotten back to us. Palm View Fire Chief Jerry Alanis says his department responded within one minute of the call from Alton Fire. Palmview City Attorney Eric Flores says the attorney representing the Hernandez family has not reached out to Palmview for any data or documents related to the fire. The Hidalgo County Fire Marshal's office is continuing to investigate the cause of the fire. Reporting live in Palmview with complete valley coverage, Sydney Hernandez, CBS 4 Valley at 6.